Hello beautiful people, it's Heather from Pine Mill Fiber and Farm. Today I'm going to show you how I wash my wool. It's really simple, really basic the way I do it, so let's get started. Look at my caramel fleece I have that I'm ready to wash. And I wash a pretty small chunk at a time. Um, maybe, uh, oh I don't know, a quarter pound of fleece at a time, half a pound of fleece at a time. And that makes it easy for me with my uh, set up because I just have a camper size sink right now to work with. Um, some people will wash a whole fleece in their bathtub, so there's different options if you wish to wash a bigger chunk. But I'm going to show you just a really simple way to wash a fleece without a lot of equipment, without special buckets, anything like that. So I'm just filling, finishing filling up my sink here. And I have hot water. I want not boiling hot water, but like dishwater hot. Um, hot to the touch. And for how much of a fleece I have, that's probably enough water. And all I'm going to do is lightly submerge this, gently pressing down. You really don't want to agitate your fleece a lot when you're washing it. Um, Wool can felt. Usually it takes a change in temperature and agitation to felt wool. So you really don't want to do both at the same time. And you can see how brown this water is turning. It really depends on um, your fleece, how long this process will take because some fleeces are really dirty and some are really clean. This one was jacketed most of the year, but I can tell that based upon how dirty this water is and that I'm seeing a little bit of veggie matter in here, not a lot, not not bad at all. I know that it um, it's going to need at least a couple rinses, okay? So... What I will do is I will let it sit in this rinse water for 20 minutes. I'm going to strain out the rinse water, gently remove the fleece. I'm going to add another batch of rinse water, hot rinse water for 20 minutes. I never change the temperature of my water. I keep that the same because that can um, cause your fleece to felt. So after 20 minutes of the second rinse, I'm going to check if my how clear this water is, okay? It's going to keep getting more and more clear after every rinsing. So I'm just going to let this soak and we'll be right back. i up my rinse water and you can see the water is still brown but it's coming out a lot clearer. Now the next time I will wash this, I will do just a small amount of Dawn dish soap. There's other kinds of soaps you can use also, but you need to do some research to see what's compatible with the bowl. So after this rinse is through, I will do a 20 minute soak with just a small amount of dish soap, literally just a couple small squirts, especially for this amount of wool. And then I will do one more rinse after the wash, and that's it. Completely done washing. You need a good place to dry it out, and this step is actually crucial because if you don't dry your wool out all the way and then you go and store it, it is um, going to mold and you're going to have problems. So I dry mine on the top bench of uh, our sauna here. Um, you could also dry it outside. Just make sure that like animals can't get it or it's not going to blow away. In the summer that works well if you have a wood stove you can dry it near that works well otherwise really anywhere um, in your home that receives you know enough air and airflow it will dry out even if it takes a while so this chunk is still pretty well held together it's not necessarily felted together it's just how it was held together on the animal and this is how I actually love to keep mine because it's really easy then when I go to spin this to just pull a lock out and I don't need to um, pull a lock out when I wash, which can be more time consuming in my opinion. So anyways, yeah, this is just a chunk of um, maybe a half a pound or a pound of fleece at the most. 
Probably not even that much, actually. And that's a really good manageable amount to spin at a time. To try to spin with raw wool, it's a really fun experience because you're really as close to the animal in its natural form as possible, and you're learning about different breeds because you're going to see the different characteristics in the wool. And if you have a desire to keep taking your, your hobby of fiber one step deeper down the rabbit trail, this is it. Like, this is the, the step that would be before actually just buying the sheep itself, right? So enjoy. Support a small farmer. Support your local farmers. Uh, get your hands on some small fleece. There's a couple books that are really, really excellent, and I will share those with you in the comments. We'll see ya.